Hello. It's been almost a year since I made a video comparing an 8K QLED TV to a 4K OLED TV. And it proved to be by far the most popular video I've ever made. It's coming up for a million views, which is mad. It's also had over 6,000 comments, so thank you for that. And some of the comments have been, shall we say, passionate? But it's been very interesting. And I thought this anniversary would be a good opportunity to make another video and address some of the issues that keep coming up. Also gives me a chance to look at the 2020 models of QLED and OLED TVs. So I approached LG to see if they fancied helping out again. And guess what? They said yes. So it's about now you're probably expecting some sort of silly unboxing video. Too late. These are the tellies. And they're massive. The 75-inch Q90T from Samsung and the 77-inch C10 from LG. Ta -da. So let's quickly start off by trying to answer the top five comments from the last video. Straight in at number five, it's unfair to compare two TVs of different tech. Why not? I mean, that's the whole point of reviews, isn't it? Actually, I sort of get the point when we're discussing 8K versus 4K. But in that video, we were using a test chart of black and white stripes, exactly one pixel thick. And I had a camera with a macro lens resting on each screen. If you can't see the pixels or the black and white stripes at any distance, then there's a problem and the tech shouldn't matter especially with a black and white test chart. At number four, I failed to mention burn-in. I did. I've never seen any burn-in. I've been using OLEDs at work for over five years now, and I've yet to see any hint of it at any brightness. But then I was looking at these screens from the point of movie watching or television watching, what I would call normal TV use. And in normal TV use, I haven't seen any burn-in. I'll put some links in the description below to people who've done tests. Is it a problem? I'm not a gamer. I don't know. Number three, I didn't mention how bright QLEDs can get. And it's true. They do get very bright. But don't fall into the trap of thinking that brightness is the most important thing when it comes to great HDR because it isn't. Dynamic range is everything to do with black to white. It's not just about how bright a TV can get. And if it can get too bright, that can be a problem like we had last year. You can start to clip the highlights, lose detail in the highlights. But if you've got a bright room, then QLEDs could be a better solution. The OLEDs start to shine from a picture point of view, from a HDR point of view, in a more subdued cinema type environment. That's when their pictures look great. But to be strictly fair, I thought we'd look at both TVs this time around in a brighter environment. Almost there. Number two, you can't compare two TVs without getting them calibrated. Um, not sure about this one. How many people actually get their televisions calibrated? I've no idea. I suppose if you're spending a lot of money, then it's definitely worth getting professional calibration on your screen because it does make a huge difference. The LG C10 actually comes with a picture profile called Filmmaker Mode, which apparently displays a picture which is very accurate to what top directors want to see in a cinema release. And it works well, it looks great, but it does need cinema levels of brightness in your room for it to look really good. But I take the point about calibration. So meet Ivan. Ivan is an ISF certified professional calibrator, and he kindly spent hours calibrating these two TVs so that to the eye, they look almost identical. Top job. I'll put all his details below in the description, and it's worth it. And finally, number one, the most frequent comment out of all of the comments, 65 inches is too small a screen to see 8K resolution. And I think this is rubbish, because it's not related to the viewing distance. 
the size of the screen and your viewing distance is one sum because it's to do with pixel density. What's the difference between sitting 10 feet away from a 100 inch screen or 5 feet away from a 50 inch screen? I don't think there's much difference. Now all the way along I've been using THX recommended viewing distances to the size of the screens. But I take the point that people are making. So this year we've got two much larger screens. Will it make a difference? Well, Steve and Mark know nothing about either screen. They don't know what resolutions they are. And I've told them nothing about either screen. Let's see if they notice. So you obviously got the uh, anonymous invite in the post like I did. Yeah, who did figure? Drop it through the letterbox. I see no refreshments have, uh, have been laid yeah, on. Yeah, my, my <laughs> request for the rider didn't make it through, obviously. We're back to do the same so thing, what, I guess, what, right? Yeah, but what are we looking at? What, what's the brief? Well, we don't know. We've got two tellies. Yeah. Which one do we like Which the most? Which look identical. What are you going to call it? Is that one or two, A and B? No, left and, right? le left and then right. OK. Um, Size-wise, are there... They, no, that screen's bigger, isn't it, on the left? Is it? Because look at the height of the screen. Oh, a smidge. Slightly bigger screen on the left. But I'll tell you, the pictures look identical. That's slightly, not crushed, but the, the blacks are slightly blacker on that one. On the left. But which means that the one on the right has got slightly more detail in the shadows. Okay, I'm having to do that tennis head yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. See, see on the, 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 the sideboard? Yeah. There's a bit more detail on the shadow. Yeah, although I would say I like it when the when the blacks get really deep and black at the bottom, you right? Because like I think that's kind of quite filmic. I don't mean about deep blacks, that kind of cine look, but it seems to be like there's the, the grayscale on the black end seem to have been absorbed into the black. Right, okay. Yeah, okay. So I see what you're saying. I'm not seeing the low grayscales. Right. The left one has definitely got a bit more colour to it. I'm talking, talking a smidge, a so, smidge. But that could be down to the kind of You think a bit more saturation yeah, on the left? Yeah, a bit more saturation. No, I look at Deep. the purple dress again, look. Oh, but the yellow's darker on there. And now that red looks darker. Is it adjusting by itself? I don't think so, because they're, st they're still matching that's, that's so well, well that's, aren't they? That's certainly a bit darker. Oh, look, it's a macho nice. cameraman in the jungle. Ask me if I've been in the jungle filming. Have you been in the jungle filming? Funny you should ask that, yes. I've been in a kind of a jungle, but it was in a kind of park, so I don't think that counts. So, let's go back. This okay. is a great... The, for me, the colour matching is, is fantastic. How heavy is that tripod? But... What would we be carrying that around? The, he's got an assistant. The saturation is a lot more yeah, obvious see, here. Yeah, right? exactly. On, exactly. The, on the left? Yeah. Now, is, you said this last time, right? Yeah. Is that coming across more saturated because it, it, the, the blacks are lower more down contrast, more contrast. More contrast can give the illusion of more saturation. Because I remember that's something that you were talking about. Interlinked, yeah, exactly. I think it's not actually more saturated. I think it's more contrasty. They both seem to be holding the highlights well. Yeah, agreed. They're, they're not popping out. They're both, I'd say, equal in highlights. So, let's talk about sharpness. What, what do we think about the sharpness? Now, am I... Am I immediately going to see what we said this. last time, right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> the left one. But, but you pointed out, is that because of the... Uh, if you up the contrast, it gives the perception of... Oh, I don't... Yeah, but you look at the higher fur. sharpness. Look at the... F but yeah, but if you look at each individual strand in this ape's fur, I'd say they're about equal. Have you ever filmed a glacier? No. Ask me. Have you... No, no. Go on. Oh, no, no, oh, I'm not going. I'm, I'm, please, I'm please. I'm so tired of this. Guess what? I filmed a glacier. Have you? <laughs> I think they're the same sharpness. They look Do the same you? resolution, but no, Paul, they're not. Uh, well, he tricked us last time. Yeah, I know. So, so this is a 4K picture then, because it's... Okay. I mean, it's not super, super sharp. No. From here, from my memory, right, looking at the two, two screens we saw last year, I don't think these are as sharp. No. I'm liking the pictures. I mean, I'll, I'd have no problem sitting here watching it, right, mm -hmm. if I was watching this program. But, look, talking about what we saw before, now this, this That's is sharper like footage, right? That's completely different. That is, 
that, that is a much, much better image, than a sharper image than we saw. Yeah, and so they're, they're matching on that. They're identical. Well, near enough. Right, I'm going in. I'm going in for my close-up. Get my pound shop spectacles. I have to take mine off when I get close. I know, I've put Short sighted. It's old age. Hmm. Oh, I'm getting in motion. Yeah, me too. Does it look as sharp as the screens we saw last time? Close up. Do you remember the shot of all those cars in New York? No, I can see. I can see the pixels quite clearly. Oh, I do get motion sickness. Stand this close. I can. I can. Yeah. I don't know what kind of screen this is, but really close, you can see. I don't remember seeing the pixels in the last year's ones. No. Let's swap. Have a look at that one. You can definitely see the pixel matrix. Yeah, can't you? you can really clearly. Lovely images, though. Yeah, the they are colours nice. on that. That's, that's beautiful. I'm still preferring this one. Are you? Yeah. Don't know why. I'm just. I think I just. I'm seeing more detail on this one. More shadow detail. No, not, I'm, not more resolution. I said resolution is identical. I'm still going left. I mean, it's. We're talking. Yeah. Now, do you remember the detail on those taxis on the, I can remember this footage. Over, sitting back over there, they look sharp. When yeah. you're actually close when up. When you get close, no. You can see the actual individual pixels. They're definitely not as sharp. I don't remember seeing those last time. No. And yeah, there's mm. less detail. Nice picture. I'm, I'm, I'm liking the picture. Definitely not as sharp. I like the overall look of the pictures. See, again, I prefer that. I prefer that picture to this one. Even close up, you can see, look, it's, it's grabbing you, look. It's saying, suck me into that scene. Look at it, look at the beautiful no, darker blacks. No, still. Oh, it's lovely, it's lush. Don't normally watch telly this close. No, but I would happily sit and watch this. Right, well, I've, I'm, I think we're both agreed there, aren't Getting we, Mark? motion sickness standing next <laughs> no. to No, it's too big. We're both agreed, right? Not as sharp as last time. No. But from here, but th I wouldn't watch that's telly a lovely picture. from six inches away. I'd watch it from here. No, that's absolutely lovely. So are we thinking these don't look as high resolution because they're bigger screens? Oh, it's, oh it's, okay. a, it's, a, it's a tricky one because when you're sitting back here, they look high resolution. When you get close... Oh, he's teasing us now, oh, isn't he? He's teasing yeah. us. So final answer, 4K on both. I've, I've still got to say 4K on both. Yeah, I, it doesn't look any greater than 4K. You're right. Ooh. We, we, it's like we, we knew that. Like we do. <laughs> yeah, we knew that. Yeah, we all knew that. But seriously, the guys do make an interesting point. And it's all to do with the resolution of the screen compared to the size of the screen and how far away you want to watch the screen. And I would argue that if you're viewing TV from normal or recommended viewing distances, so that the angle of view to the width of the screen remains the same and the pixel density remains the same, then it shouldn't matter how big a screen you've got. 4K will still look good on any size screen. It works for the cinema and it should work for any size TV. However, you might remember last year, the guys were looking at 65 inch screens and it didn't seem to matter how close they got. The pictures look great. They look super sharp, even close up. They couldn't see the pixels. This year, with 75 and 77 inch screens, they definitely could see the pixels. And if they got too close, things started to look soft. So if you like watching movies on very large screens, very close up, or maybe you're a gamer and you like to sit close for that immersive experience, or you just like using TVs for computer monitors, then that's the best argument I've heard for 8K television. It also means a lot of the comments I got last year were right about the size of the screen, but only if you're very close. But what do we think about these 2020 televisions? Well, let's be honest, they both produce fantastic pictures, and there's very little in normal viewing distances to spot between them. 
Unfortunately, the Samsung this year, the Q90T, doesn't come with the One Connect box. I really like that, and it made wall mounting much easier. It does, however, have much improved sound. And I know a lot of people use sound bars, but the sound is really good off the TV this year. It also has FreeSync, so that will keep the gamers happy. The LG C10, physically, looks much the same as the C9. Even the huge 77-inch is shockingly thin, and it has those amazing true blacks that only OLED can display. That also has FreeSync, and it gives you G-Sync as well, so the gamers should be even more happy with very low latency. I'll put a link to all the info in the descriptions below. The thing about the OLED for me, though, is those self-lit pixels. They just look fantastic. And if you like watching movies in a cinema-type environment, subdued lighting, there's nothing to touch it. It just looks amazing. The trouble is, if you like watching on a very big screen, you're still going to have to look at an 8K OLED, just to check, obviously. Thanks for watching.